and welcome to cognitive skill number 16 previous and underpinning knowledge and skills know what you know and being able to reuse it we call this recontextualization being able to know what you know and then reuse it in another context so it's quite a skill to be able to know what you know. I mean, that might sound obvious, but actually it's not as easy as you think. So once you know what you know, then you may be able to use it and apply it in another context. I've got a nice little activity where I'll explain to you using Lego that demonstrates this. Also some examples in um, making a cake and recontextualizing your knowledge as an example. And then finally, I'm going to give you an example between single phase AC and three phase AC and how underpinning knowledge or recontextualizing or reusing understanding is important. So knowing what you know, often difficult because we automate things we do use often. So an example is driving a car. It takes a conscious effort to reflect on things, though they are the particular skills or knowledge. You don't, if you can remember back to when you first learnt to drive a car, it took a lot of cognitive energy to remember where you were positioned on the road, what was coming on your right, what was coming on your left, were you looking in the rear vision mirror often enough to know what was behind you, staying concentrated on the road ahead of you getting ready to change gears, ready to stop. Is someone on the pedestrian crossing? I could go on and on and on. But when you first learn to drive a car, many of the skills of operating the brakes and the accelerator and the steering had not yet been up automated. So quite often once we do get something automated, it's often difficult to go back the other way and unautomate it so we can use it somewhere else. An example is a uh, forklift driver. So contextualization, it can be quite a difficult aspect. It's a matter of determining how the knowledge and skill from one situation may be able to fit into another situation. The car example and driving a forklift. Steering, accelerator and brake are very similar on a forklift. But your hands are now expected to do much more than just steer. In a car, basically, at least one hand is steering all the time. Maybe your left hand is used to change gears unless you're driving an automatic. But on a forklift, they are automatic by definition. There's normally not any gears. You just got forward and reverse. But you're expected to be able to use the tilt the forks, lift them up and down, and move things around. You also have to think about mass and moment. It's very dicky thing to lift up something very heavy with your forklift and drive around with it, lift it up five, six, seven meters in the air. Because if you've got something up that high, it takes very little moment to actually knock the forklift over. So, that's a skill that you don't think about in a car because in a car, what we call the center of gravity is very, very much lower. And you don't have to worry about mass and moment so much. You have to worry about mass, allowing enough space to brake a car to have it stop at an intersection, for example. But for moment, you don't have to think about that, but you can recontextualize many of your car driving skills into driving a forklift but you have to actually practice it and do it that's because they won't just give you a forklift driver's license I have a forklift driver's license but it's because I went and did a forklift driving course and at the end of the two-day course I demonstrated that I could use a forklift safely so you can recontextualize skills and the difference between driving a car and applying that skill to a forklift is a perfect example of being able to recontextualize a skill. 
being able to use underpinning knowledge. Now I have a fun activity and you can try this at home. So try this little activity with a mate. Get a small Lego kit. Doesn't matter what it is, something you know, one of those little small eight, ten, twelve dollar ones. One person takes the parts, the other takes the instructions. Sit back to back. So the person with the instructions can't see the parts in the kit and the person with the parts in the kit can't see the instruction. So without either looking at what the other is doing, the person with the instructions verbally only tells the person with the parts how to assemble the kit. And fun will ensue from there. So the normal outcome, use of previous experience with Lego becomes important. The use of jargon, colour, shape, the context of the model, what's being made, a car, a buggy, a plane. All of these things are prior knowledge, prior understanding of Lego itself and prior understanding of a car, a buggy or a plane. So every time you make a Lego, you're using underpinning knowledge. You are recontextualising all the time. In actual fact, when you're making any model, whether it's putting a plastic aeroplane together, a boat, a Lego of some kind, you are constantly using underpinning knowledge and your understanding of how Lego and a particular item works. And it's an important skill to have. It's an important skill to understand. And you can also use it in electrotechnology. So one of the places we strongly use it is when we're teaching AC and we're moving from one phase to three phase. So the example of one phase and three phase is an important thing. You can see the diagram down here. Here's a panel just quickly explaining how a single phase voltage is generated by rotating a wire through a magnetic field and you get the sine wave coming out of the magnetic field. If you don't have that basic underpinning understanding, then this far more complex diagram to your right, where I've got my cursor now, actually has a three phase alternator and how the voltages are generated in relation to each other. And now we're spinning a magnet rather than spinning in a magnet. So there are all kinds of differences between our single phase generator on the left and our three phase generator on the right. But you will not be able to understand the three phase generator without the underpinning knowledge and understanding of the single phase. So make sure you understand the interconnections, the horizontalness between a single phase, still using a wire rotating in a magnetic field, but in the three-phase machine, we rotate the magnetic field. In a single-phase machine, they were rotating the wire. Gets the same effect, gets the same result, but a very different way of doing it. So by making sure you understand one context, you can then use that underpinning knowledge to then learn a new one. So underpinning knowledge plays a very, very important role in all our learning. So the take-homes for stuff you already know. When starting something new, some new learning, formally or informally, take the time to ask yourself, is there knowledge or skill that I can apply in this new context? And if so, decide how and to what extent you might be able to reapply that learning. Two, we're learning something over a larger period of time Make sure you've understood the basic or the underpinning concepts at regular intervals. Now you're getting halfway and then deciding, oh, I don't know enough. So at regular intervals, reflect, spend time going over it, make sure you've understood it. It's okay to take a small risk with concepts that fall into place a little later, but the effort a little later is the time to check. This is part of your self-management if you remember. So make the effort to do that self-check a little later, not a long time later. 
3. Don't data dump. In electrical, every piece of learning is interconnected with the very next, if you'll excuse the electrical terminology. All the concepts come from one form of energy, that's electricity. So are fully integrated. Everything you learn will connect to everything you're going to learn. Find the horizontal connections, that's the integration of the concepts. It's a strong underpinning part of the knowledge that you're going to need to know. So remember with this particular cognitive skill, you can take knowledge in other contexts and reapply it into electrotechnology. You can take the stuff that you've learnt in electrotechnology as underpinning skills and apply it to new stuff that you're going to learn. So there's two things at play here. There's recontextualizing stuff that you know and reuse it and there's taking stuff that you've learnt along the way and using that to link into future learning.